Hello everybody, let's start with the presentation here. This is a little bit of a preview of what's going to happen here with the next is with the Adobe plugin. Anyway, let's look at first of all what we have here. This machine is my trusty old Dell XPS 15 laptop, which has it's a quad core machine, so basically it has eight threads. It is equipped with a GTX 1050 graphics cards. Not really the latest and greatest anymore either, but hey, this is what I have. I love this machine. Four gigs of memory, that'll have to do. So basically that's uh, the, the basis of the machine that we're going to use today to show you what, what's up with um, Adobe Premiere Acceleration in the next phase. First of all, to show that we're not really cheating here, I'm flushing all caching files here on the system, which you have to do before you actually load the projects. So. This has now all been flushed out of the system. And I'll open an empty project. Oh, well, I should, last one should do. I'll just drag some files in there. So that's empty. I have uh, Doggy is enabled, so it shows you exactly uh, also what, as an overlay, or uh, what's going on. Where you set up a project for UHD. So I'm now going to grab a clip in here and see how that goes. Let's just grab this clip in here. Put it to a different there. So this is just a H.264 clip with auto audio. So save you the same uh, horrible st audio stuttering. So here we go. Looks already pretty okay. You see, it's full res. It's meaning it's really it's full glory. 3840 times 2160 and uh, let's enable it will show you again here what we have in terms of uh, CPU load let's press play we had some drop frames oh my god we dropped one frame but you see in the background, it's playing, uh, this is a H.264 30 frame or 29.97 frame per second file, which plays quite fluidly, I would say. I can also try to do a scrubber a little bit in the timeline, see how that fares. It fares quite well. But most importantly, when I play, look at the CPU load. 25%, 21%, 19%. The GPU, on the other hand, has a little bit to do. There is a decode, because we use the decode offloading with the NVDEC of the GTX uh, 1050 card. That actually has something to do. Um, but other than that, it's really not doing much either. But again, look at it. CPU hovering along at virtually nothing. The, the machine doesn't even generate any additional f fan noise, because it is just sitting here uh, having a good old time, not having to do much. Yeah, so I mean it could be better, but I mean for for what it is, it's a long gob file. This is actually not so bad. Yeah, you can see now even didn't even drop a frame to start with. We have the frame drop indicator here, which still is all in green. This is what we want to see. And again, CPU load negligible, yeah, 24%, 22%, 21%. And the GPU, yeah, also hovering away. So that, that shows you what how much uh, load you have here. 23% is the end, basically decoding load. So I could, of course, do this at 60. And uh, we'll uh, endeavor doing that with 60 as well. This is H.264. The, the GTX 1050 isn't really that well suited to do HAVC. It can do it somewhat. But the on the RTX series, the uh, basically the Turing series cards from NVIDIA, um, the HAVC works much better. So that will be supported, of course, as well when we come to it. But and then probably won't be demoing on this machine here for right now. Good. That's how this looks uh, with acceleration uh, based on, uh, and here, of course, down to zero. Now that we stop playing, CPU down to zero. Jolly, that's the way it has to be. Anyway, so that's the one case. So let's, I have to now reconfigure this. I'll show you how this looks uh, in its original form when you uh, have this without acceleration. Good, let's shut Adobe Premiere down. Do you wanna save this? Yes, why not? Then I don't need to reopen that again. Good, then I go here. 
turn the acceleration off. Okay, start Adobe Premiere again. And this is now the wonderful same clip, but oh yeah, let's bring the task manager up to see. This is now already trying to to break the CPU in the background quite a bit. I press play, what happens? A whole load of nothing. Come on, play. Uh, it's actually doing better than expected. There must be some caching must have happened. Let's jump further to the back. 100% CPU load, 80%. Yeah, but it's actually not so bad. So I, I would have expected worse. So some caching must have happened in the background already. Come on, play. Hundred percent load. I should have probably clenched, uh, cleaned the cache out beforehand. Yeah, but here we have points where it really managed to hit points where there was no caching occurred. And this is a typical syndrome that you have uh, dealing with Adobe Premiere, unfortunately, without hardware acceleration. It sits there and it just looks like this. It looks like a more or less a slideshow. This this goes away, of course. If I now drag a little bit back and press play again, then some caching here will have occurred and then it won't be quite so bad. But... Generally speaking, uh, if you are run out of the stuff that has been cached, uh, it looks quite awful. Try this again. Let's yeah, in the front it's not so bad, but if I go into the back, where it has never been played before. Yep, this is more looking like a slideshow. You can see the render FP rendering here. And yes, you can probably overcome that with a very big fat CPU, but in this case, I'm hovering here around below two FPS to get me to my 30 FPS, which I was before. The, the yeah, that, that would require 10, 20 times the CPU speed uh, uh, to get there. Jolly, 1.4. Ah, uh, yeah, well, what can I say? Um, I can see that I can make this a little bit better by, by going, say, 1 8th resolution. But remember, beforehand, when I did demonstrate it with the acceleration, it was all full size. We were quite happy playing at full size. But here, even going down to 1 8th resolution in this case doesn't really help much at all. It reduces the picture quality, but it doesn't help us much. So go to full again. All in all, the the use case for this is actually supposedly playing right now. I don't know what it's doing right now, but now it has a has a complete hiccup. Anyway, I I think I made my case. If the GPU is loaded for something as well. It's probably because it's using the CUDA pipe, uh, but it doesn't use it for the uh, decoding part of it. And uh, yeah, what can I say here? Where it's cached a little bit, it looks a little bit better, but all in all, I liked it better before, let's put it this way. And, and we still have ways to also accelerate this further than what I've demoed. Um, and especially the scrubbing around the timeline, we wish to make that a little bit more elegant and uh, haptic, if you you know what I mean, uh, than, than what we have currently learned. But this here, I mean, it's, it, it, in, uh, more or less, you're better off in this mode to flip the files into some iframe format and then work with it rather than try to work with the H.264 uh, straight as it is. 
And this is actually one of the easier files here from a Sony camera, which I have a, a very easy, it has a not that long gops. If you take some clips, as I have some, some, some drones or some DJI MP4 files that I've dialed with, they have very long gop structures. It is even much worse. Um, yeah. Good. I hope that gives you an impression of what the advantages are of using hardware accelerated decoding. Thanks.